Uh, Professor Ramnik Aluwalia. Um, Professor, thank you so much for your time. Now, uh, your organization specializes in providing health, wellness, and development programs for higher education and training uh, uh, sectors specifically. Uh, before we talk about this cluster outbreak, tell us what are some of the major challenges that you have faced in supporting um, the COVID-19 response in these kinds of institutions over the last year and a half or so? So Mariso, thank you very much for having me. Um, absolutely, you know, uh, the four key variables that actually uh, affect higher education, which affect the entire country uh, when it comes to um, COVID-19, exactly what we are listening to the Minister of Health currently and exactly with the new variant that is in place. Uh, and the first big one is, of course, behavior. Um, if you really ask me, uh, what's the major reason of what we're experiencing currently in South Africa and, and what we're going to be experiencing, which is in the incoming fourth wave, is, is lessening of our behavior changes, you know. And, and the second one is, is young people. Uh, and these are both interrelated. Uh, and, and if you really ask me what's going to always be the deciding factor, whether it's the fourth wave incoming or the fifth wave, will always be young people. And the third variable is vaccination. And they're all interconnected. So when the behavior becomes, when the behavior loosens itself, um, uh, and, and the, I'm sorry for this, um, when That's the behavior okay. loosens itself, uh, when the, uh, I'm sorry for this. Uh, so when the behavior loosens itself uh, uh, among young people, the young people uh, are the biggest driver of this, uh, of this pandemic, and we already know that, and they're not vaccinated. And all these three factors will allow the vaccine, the virus to move from one human to the other human, and, and it finds a body where it starts mutating and develops into a new variant that we see now currently. So the four combinations together becomes absolutely lethal for South Africa. It's absolutely lethal for for higher education, what we start seeing is cluster outbreaks. Uh, it happened in the just before the second wave. If you look at the last year, exactly at the same time, we had cluster outbreaks in about three universities. Exactly a month later, we had a variant called beta, and it affected the entire, um, the, the whole third, the second wave. Now, when we were in Easter vacations, we saw massive outbreaks in, in Shwani University, in University of Pretoria. And exactly a month later, we found ourselves in the third wave. Now we come into, into a period where relaxation of behavior started happening. People started loosening out. A uh, lot of uh, crowds started meeting together. Transmission of the virus was exactly what the virus enjoyed. Young people not vaccinated. Young people actually will decide. South Africa is a young country. Uh, Africa is a young continent. And eventually, young people will decide the fate of coronavirus in this country. And if young people can get vaccinated, if I could just come in there for a second, uh, what can you tell us then about this latest uh, cluster outbreak? Uh, uh, you're reporting that it's happening at the Twana University of Technology. How did you detect that it was a cluster outbreak and what do we know about its origins and how it is spread? Exactly last week, uh, we started seeing, in fact, uh, about 10 days back, we started seeing uh, a number of students started becoming positive or started showing symptoms. And when we started doing contact tracing, we got a cluster investigation team there. We started realizing that suddenly there is something unusual why the infection is spreading so quickly. Uh, at one time, we saw about 60 young people becoming positive at the same time from one discipline across, from one campus and one residence in particular which means people who reside together in congregation setting, which are living together, the infection moves very quickly. And suddenly when you see infections were dormant, there was no much uh, clusters happening, and suddenly you see one big cluster coming, starts giving you uh, uh, what you call this uh, awareness around, there's something unusual happening, which means either there's a new variant, people are losing behavior, and young people are transmitting the virus more quickly. And that's exactly what we saw with TUT about, uh, about 10 days back. And as much as now we have kind of curtailed the, the, the infection or we have kind of put so much of quarantine and early isolation facilities that we have uh, cut the transmission rate, but eventually we started realizing that this is predominantly because what the country is experiencing, what counting is experiencing. And that's exactly how it starts. So cluster outbreaks, 
will always give you the first ever indication that something unusual is happening when we're dealing with uh, airborne disease like COVID-19, where mutations are happening, where the virus does mutate, and where we know who will be the most vulnerable to transmit the virus. And in this case, young people do play a very significant role. Uh, now, just in this case, before I let you go, because unfortunately we are running out of time, in this case at Tswane University of Technology, when you realized you were dealing with a, or you and your colleagues realized you were dealing with a, uh, a cluster outbreak, um, how quickly do you then move to try and ensure that it doesn't spread as far as it already has spread? And what has been the reaction um, from those students who tested positive? Do they understand then that they have to go into quarantine, they shouldn't be going home and taking this home to their parents or their elderly relatives as well? What is the reaction? action being? Do they understand um, how their behavior, once they've tested positive, could impact the spread of this thing going further? Absolutely. So we've got cluster investigation teams in every province and predominantly also built through protocols at every institution. Uh, so the good thing is, uh, because we have been living with this virus for 18 months, these teams have been working. It's not the first time we have a cluster outbreak. Uh, it, it happens every wave and before and every wave, and, and that's exactly how we have been putting systems together. So what happens is immediately the cluster investigation team starts seeing a number of people. So as soon as you start seeing about six to seven people becoming positive in a similar demographic, in a similar congregation of our residents, we start putting a contact tracing program very quickly, start putting people into, into isolation very quickly. So what happened was in this case, when we found about 60 students, we actually do not let them go home. Some do prefer to go home and we ensure if they're going home, they are going home homes where they have facilities to isolate themselves. Otherwise, we have now put up a protocol in our residences, in our, uh, in our um, uh, housing uh, associations around that we can actually put quarantine and isolation facilities within our own institution, in, in our own residences, which means students then move into the isolation program absolutely a day and then. And once they are tested, they move into a quarantine process there. So we can mix uh, students when they are tested positive because when you're positive, you can reside together. But when you are not tested positive, you are a, a contact or showing some symptoms, you need to be very quickly put into isolation. So that's how you start breaking the chain of the virus, moving from one person to the other. And then that's exactly what was put in place. We have curtailed the, the, the outbreak very quickly. We have closed that residence. We have closed that campus. Um, it is a difficult time. I feel for young people. I feel for people around. It is very frustrating. And we keep mm -hmm. on asking, uh, wearing of masks, social distancing, get vaccinated. We're going to keep on doing it because that's the only way we can start taming this virus. And this mm -hmm. virus can be tamed down. If young people can get vaccinated, we can stop, stop the spread. Exactly early isolation and quarantine systems that we put in place to break this virus equally.